Flashpoint in the North Atlantic. NATO warships, again hunting Russian nuclear subs, hovering over the West's economic lifelines. This is Fox 333. I hear you loud and clear, over. And Russian spy ships disguised as trawlers. We're filming everything on the ship, we're filming antennas. Preparing for possible sabotage. There's two men staring at us. Wow, they're looking at us. This is really a strange situation. Almost a tense situation, they're looking at us. An urgent game of cat and mouse after someone blew up the Nord Stream gas line. As war rages in Ukraine, high stakes in the high north. In the choppy, icy waters of the North Sea, the periscope from a Russian nuclear submarine peaks above the surface. A few minutes later, the entire Yasin Shevardnetsk class sub breaks into the open. On the conning tower, a Russian officer, as Vladimir Putin's Navy shows the flag just 60 miles off the coast of Norway. If the European economy has an Achilles heel, it is here in the vast gas and oil fields that help keep European and British homes warm during the winter. A Norwegian Air Force P-3 Orion surveillance plane captured these images of Russian subs, ships, and MiG fighters passing through and over these sensitive waters. For the Norwegian Navy, a member of the NATO alliance, high alert. The stretch of the North Atlantic is filled with 80 drilling platforms, thousands of miles of pipelines, and the maze of internet and telecom lines that stretch from Europe to America. This morning, along major Russian gas pipelines to Europe, clear signs of sabotage. It was September 2022 when someone blew up the Nord Stream gas pipeline with three explosions. A critical energy supply meant to run from Russia to Germany 260 feet beneath the surface. The UN calculates it took four to 500 kilograms of TNT or up to 350 kilograms of plastic explosives. But the EU sanctions that followed Russia's invasion of Ukraine kept that pipeline from ever being turned on. As you can see here, we're coming down to the seafloor for the first time. The dive conditions was, was quite hard. Uh, Trond Larsen piloted an underwater drone over the Nord Stream wreckage. You can also see the, the pipe is bent at an upwards angle. As you can see here, the, right away coming down to the, to the bottom, we found rebar sticking out of the seafloor. Denmark and Sweden quickly launched a criminal investigation looking for definitive proof of who was responsible. In April 2023, the Swedish prosecutor announced it had not come to a conclusion, writing, Our hope is to be able to confirm who has committed this crime, but it should be noted that it likely will be difficult given the circumstances. Were Ukrainian sympathizers to blame, as some U.S. intel sources suggested? Was it Britain, as Russia suggested? Did the U.S. or Norway play a role? Or was Russia itself behind the Nord Stream attack? Well, I think the Russians have benefited from this incident, um, and therefore my suspicions continue to track back to Moscow. NATO says in the immediate aftermath of the attack, Russia ramped up its naval activity through these waters between Norway and Scotland, mapping out a possible sabotage scenario, which Russia has denied. We're filming everything on the ship, we're filming antennas. In April 2023, Scandinavian reporters went out on the water to capture these images of an alleged Russian spy ship. There's two men staring at us. Wow, they're looking at us. This is really a strange situation, almost a tense situation. They're looking at us. Norwegian Navy Commander Toril Herland. And an unusual interest in your gas and oil pipelines and infrastructure. Definitely. They're around this area um, more than once. They're going back and forth. They're following the pipeline. So they have a suspicious uh, activity. To be sure, Russia is under extreme pressure. International sanctions, European borders and airports closed to Russian citizens. It's oil and gas exports limited and price control. As NATO funds and equips the Ukrainian military, grinding Russian forces down on the battlefield. 
But while the Russian army has suffered humiliating losses with decrepit equipment, poor morale and training, analysts say Vladimir Putin has actually invested heavily in his navy. Veteran U.S. Navy admirals say Russia's newest ships and subs can even rival the best of the U.S. Navy. The U.S. submarine force is the best in the world, full stop. The next best are the Russians. Admiral James Tavridis is the former Supreme NATO commander in Europe. They're very capable undersea. Their boats are in quite good condition. They're quiet. Um, they know their tactics. We ought to be very concerned about their ability there. That's a very different part of the Russian military than the ground forces, which are being chewed up by the Ukrainians. Concerned about increased Russian activity in these waters, NATO ordered more destroyers and subs to back up the Norwegian Navy, to stand guard over the oil and gas platforms and pipelines that are so critical to the global economy. Hi, good afternoon. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Welcome. Nice to meet you, Thank Tom. Thank you very much. To see it firsthand, we joined the Norwegian ship Sortland as it left for an extended patrol, pulling out of its home port near Bergen, Norway, for the rough waters of the North Atlantic, looking for Russian spy ships masquerading as fishing vessels. And mysterious aerial drones that have increased dramatically in recent months. The message from enlisted personnel on a fast boat. We're here, and that will show that we are here and that we are keeping watch. To the captain on the bridge. Because NATO, we stand together and help each other. NATO is now forward-leaning in these waters, protecting the critical oil, gas, and Internet assets. Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Finland are joining forces in a new Nordic air defense alliance with 250 fighter jets. As Finland, with its 800-mile border with Russia, is now a full member of the NATO alliance. Finland has today become the 31st member of NATO. The era of military non-alignment in our history has come to an end. A new era begins. But with a bear on its border, Norway also wants to avoid any miscalculation. Russia knows where they have us, so uh, we will act as a very predictable neighbor. When we come back, Norway's top admiral says his country is very wary of Russian activity in the far north. They are a neighbor, uh, but it's a neighbor who has uh, attacked another neighboring country, uh, shown both uh, a will and also a uh, ability to use military force. And our Norwegian ship is pulled into a secret NATO mission. NATO warship Foxtrot 333, this is Whiskey 342. Over. Do you feel like you are really on the, on the front line of NATO? Yeah, in the high north, uh, I feel so. Daybreak over the exquisite Norwegian city of Bergen. Known as the gateway to the fjords, this picturesque city on Norway's west coast was once a Viking trading center. Today, it relies on fishing and tourists who come from around the world. Only five and a half million people live in Norway, but this country is critical to NATO as the guardians of the north. A founding member of NATO, Norway, plays host to the yearly joint Viking exercises with its alliance allies in the far north training in the extreme cold of the Arctic Circle for a potential conflict with Russia, with which it shares a 123-mile land border. And the air F-35 Norwegian fighters intercepting Russian reconnaissance planes and nuclear-capable strategic bombers. We're dealing with two enemies out here, uh, the enemy, the actual enemy, uh, but also the terrain and the environment. In 1945, the Soviet Army actually helped rout German forces from Norway's Finnmark region. But today, it's Russia that keeps Norway watching its borders. Three Nordic public broadcasters report Russia has a program to further cut off energy supplies to Europe by sabotaging wind farms in the North Sea. And Russia has already a fleet of ships disguised as fishing trawlers and research vessels that are surveilling and mapping the region for sabotage. In April 2023, Norway expelled 15 Russian diplomats 
that it accused of spying under diplomatic cover. Norway said Russia poses the greatest intelligence threat to the country and that the threat is increasing against the backdrop of Europe's deteriorating security situation. Annika Houtfeldt is Norway's foreign minister. How critical is, is Norway to the NATO alliance? I think Norway is NATO in the north. But in case of a military attack against Norway, we are absolutely dependent on reinforcement from other NATO allies. We can, cannot stand up against an aggression from Russia alone. This is Murmansk here? This is Murmansk. Vice Admiral Rune Andersen commands the Norwegian Navy. Right across Norway's northern border, Russia's biggest naval base sits on the Kola Peninsula. And it is perhaps the world's largest concentration of, of nuclear weapons. For decades, NATO aircraft, ships and subs have tracked Russian ships and submarines as they leave Murmansk, travel down Norway's west coast and head out into the Atlantic. An undersea game of cat and mouse. They can be very quiet and go for long periods of time without us being able to track them. Helicopters routinely drop sonar buoys, listening for Russian activity. Recently, the Norwegian Navy and NATO's network of ocean floor sensors picked up a change in Russian submarine movements. Operating more uh, unpredictable, uh, sometimes more provocative against the uh, UK, US and other countries. Uh, so this is why the attention from Western allies have, have increased for the whole North Atlantic. Do you have a pretty good sense of what the Russians are doing around Norway right now? Yeah, we do. We have a, we have a relatively strong sen network um, of sensors. Um, we have uh, activity out there uh, on the surface, below the surface and in the air, enabling us to have a pretty good picture on, on what's moving around uh, in the North Atlantic. Now with Russian ships, subs and aircraft sailing through and above Norwegian oil and gas fields, Norway's Navy and Coast Guard have stepped up patrols and called NATO for backup. The Norwegian Navy Coast Guard ship Sortland leaves Bergen as the March sun sets. The crew has just taken on the fuel it needs to begin its patrol. And the patrol area is massive in the water, seven times the landmass of Norway itself. And the priority, looking for those Russian subs and Russian ships that are spending an awful lot of time near Norwegian waters. For three days and two nights, we join the crew of the Sortland on patrol. The country's territorial waters, roughly the size of the Mediterranean, full of valuable fishing stock, but also those oil and gas platforms, the pipelines and internet lines connecting Europe to North America. The concern, all of it could be vulnerable to Russian sabotage or attack. As night falls, the Sortland's bridge goes dark. We're headed out uh, up this fjord. We're with this lighthouse, we're cutting west and headed out to the oil fields. Somewhere out there could be a Russian spy ship masquerading as a fishing trawler. Adrian Valanger is the ship's officer. So what we see out here is that there are Russian vessels that is sailing without tracking uh, and who are they're f having weird sailing patterns that makes me suspicious. At night, the tension runs high. Is a hostile contact close by? It's two in the morning here on the North Sea. The wind is howling, the seas are rough, and it is very cold. The mission for this boat is to patrol around that platform on behalf of NATO looking for saboteurs or unusual Russian activity. Underwater, the oil and gas companies also run extensive surveillance operations of their own, including cameras and drones watching for any potential underwater threat and working hand in hand with Naval Command. A lot of this infrastructure is obviously located on the seabed, which is an uh, inhospital environment. So, so it requires tailored uh, capabilities that can, uh, can sense and look and, and monitor uh, things on the seabed. Uh, so basically we are looking in, in detail on, on that infrastructure together with the industry. With industry, you literally have ears on the seabed and in the water listening to the activity and watching the activity. Yes, that's true. And, and also looking specifically on the infrastructure that sits there. 
all of this is critical to, to Europe, to Norway, to NATO and our ability to, to keep a free state. And there's another threat hovering in the air that Norwegian fast boats must chase down, drones. What makes NATO and Norway awfully suspicious right now is the number of drones that have been flying over Norway's oil and gas platforms, even its refineries. If it is Russia, they have spent years surveying the landscape and they know precisely where all of Norway's vulnerabilities might be. Acting Captain Helena Dahl. It's, uh, the drones are flying out here. They maybe fly low. They may be drones in different sizes. Some are big, some are small. They come and uh, suddenly they may just disappear. They don't necessarily head back home to a mothership. Do you think these are Russian drones? They may be Russian drones. NATO warship Foxtrot 333. This is Whiskey 342. Over. We saw the new urgency up close as the Sortland was pulled into a secret NATO operation with more ships and helicopters. So off of our port side, we have just now had visitors. Three NATO warships have shown up. One, two, three helicopters in the air right next to that very important Norwegian gas platform. This is about sending a message to Russia. NATO is on guard, on patrol, and takes this very seriously. Spanish, Dutch, and German destroyers taking up positions around Norway's troll platform, the biggest in the North Sea. High atop that platform, the president of the European Commission and NATO's secretary general announced NATO will assume protective command. The European Union and NATO both have a very clear view on the threat theater and an assessment on the situation. We have seen um, uh, how President Putin has uh, tried to use energy as a weapon uh, throughout uh, the war uh, against uh, Ukraine. And uh, uh, Norwegian Gas has helped to um, respond to that and ensure that uh, President Putin failed in his attempt uh, to uh, uh, use energy as uh, a weapon. When we come back, an inside tour of our Norwegian Naval Coast Guard ship and the question we put to top Norwegian officials, did they play a role in the Nord Stream pipeline explosion? Hi, everybody. Tom Costello with NBC News. We are on the Norwegian Sortland ship. It's a NATO mission to protect critical assets, all of the gas and oil pipelines here in the North Sea. So they are on patrol for Russian activity, Russian trawlers that seem to be doing something unusual, Russian submarines, aircraft, you name it. It's all about protecting these critical oil and gas uh, infrastructures that are a very big part of the global economy. Let's take a tour of the ship. The Sortland is a a smaller patrol vessel, but it has everything it needs. Let's duck inside and show you what's happening here. So this is the ready room, uh, and this is where they have all of their suits if they have to go into uh, the speed boat, the fast boat, out on the water. But it is very cold, so these are all uh, Arctic type of suits to protect them. And then as we walk on through this door, they have a clinic on board this ship in which medics uh, will treat just about anything. If it were very serious, they'd return to shore, but they can handle almost any basic medical emergency here. Let's go back out. So this is the A deck on board the Sortland, uh, and you'll, you'll notice everywhere there are the railings because the waters here can be very choppy in the North Sea. You come onto the A deck and immediately you've got the, the area where the crew can relax, They've got some uh, couches. They've got a TV over there right behind our photographer, Jonas. Here's the flat screen TV. But most importantly, this is the galley here and the mess hall. Uh, and they've created a great space for the uh, sailors to be able to eat together. There's not a lot of differential between the officers and the enlisted personnel on a Norwegian ship. They're all in this together. They're very, very much uh, helping hands to each other. And, and here is, by the way, where they make the day's meals, and they're already starting on lunch. But breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, pretty good food. We had spaghetti the first night we were here. We had salmon the second night we were here. Uh, what's for lunch? And, uh, a pasta salad. Not bad. Tomato soup and pasta salad. Okay, we're coming back. Save some. Okay. We'll keep going on the tour. 
So there are seven decks on board this ship, uh, and the ship is immaculately clean. I'm going to take you down to the area where we're staying, our quarters, uh, and that is going to be right down here on the first deck. Okay, so this is the first deck, uh, and this is where our quarters are. I just want to show you, uh, they've given us great accommodations. The Norwegian Navy has really been very good to us. Uh, bunk beds, as you would expect. I've been sleeping down below. A really nice warm duvet comforter, very warm. Uh, there's a table over here, there's a couch, um, and this is the view outside. If you, uh, if you want to see what's happening, just open up. Oops. <laughs> and these cabins have their own restroom, so that's a very big deal. It even has its own shower, and it's very warm water, so um, really nice accommodations considering this is, in fact, a Navy ship, and we are very much on a mission in the North Sea. So this is the final few stairs to bring us all the way up to the bridge, and it is a spectacular view, about a 180 view of the North Sea and the oil platforms. And at this very moment, there are NATO ships that have moved into this area as well. So we're watching the chief petty officer and the captain who are speaking by radio to the NATO ships surrounding us. And let me just show you, if you come over to this side, eventually you're going to see right through that window, if it's not too blown out by sun, you're going to see that's a huge Norwegian natural gas and oil platform. And that's what this is all about, protecting these assets from potential saboteurs and lately a lot of suspicious Russian activity in this re region, not only on the surface with their ships, but below the surface with submarines. And that is where the pipelines and the data lines all run, those internet data lines running all the way to North America. So this is a high priority mission for this ship, and it's a NATO mission in the North Sea. So it's 10.30 in the morning, and two NATO warships have just appeared on the horizon. They are part of this mission to protect all of these natural gas and oil platforms and the pipes and the data lines underneath the ocean surface. When we come back, the Guardians of the North are sending tanks to Ukraine as they take up defensive positions around the oil and gas fields that keep their allies warm. The Norwegian capital of Oslo may lie 2,300 miles from Kyiv, but distance has not kept Norway from sending eight of its frontline German-made Leopard tanks to the fight in Ukraine. This country of five and a half million prides itself on being an original NATO member, the self-proclaimed guardians of the North against the Russian threat. In the forbidding cold of the North Sea, they are fully armed and on watch. The Norwegian ship Sortland, patrolling directly over the oil and gas pipelines and the internet lines running to North America. Trillions of dollars of economic activity every day. After Russian subs and ships have been spotted patrolling these same waters. As a NATO admiral, does NATO's military strength feel strong to you right now? I think, uh, I think it does. And I think also the uh, deteriorating security situation in general um, has led to NATO coming even closer together. See a stronger motivation from all nations to source the NATO standing maritime groups. Uh, so definitely uh, NATO is a healthy and strong alliance. This really underscores the tension and the stakes here on the North Sea. This ship has two 50 caliber machine guns that they are constantly checking to make sure they're ready. On the bow of the ship, they've got a Swedish-built cannon. This is very much a ship that is on the front lines for NATO. Underscoring the threat, the Nord Stream explosion, the investigation is ongoing. But to some veteran U.S. Navy commanders, Russia had the means and the motive. The motive here is to send a signal to the Western Europeans that your underwater infrastructure is vulnerable, that I know where it is, effectively trying to frighten the Europeans into backing down from their support to Ukraine. Russia blames the West for the explosion. U.S. intelligence agencies have suggested Ukrainian operatives may have done it. Both Ukraine and Russia deny it. 
One report suggested Norway and the U.S. worked together to blow it up. Did Norway have any role at all in the attack on Nord Stream? No, not at all. It's ridiculous. There is uh, absolutely no truth to that. And, and to be quite honest with you, for a Norwegian Navy officer, the idea is uh, close to absurd. Norway says it has since maximized gas production to supply Europe for the next four or five years. While relying on its NATO partners to have its back, before becoming foreign minister, Annika Heldfeldt was a historian specializing in the Cold War. The situation now is stable, but Russia is unpredictable, so we must be prepared for the worst, because the security situation now in Europe is very, very serious. Channeling environment. Vice Admiral Rune Anderson has spent his entire career heavily engaged with the U.S. Navy and NATO. Norway, he says, has worked hard to understand a neighbor it has known for hundreds of years. But the relationship has changed, perhaps permanently. Our relationship to Russia is, is changed indefinitely. I mean, it, it will take a very, very long time, and it's not on the table now to start growing that trust and relationship again. Generations. Perhaps, yeah. In NATO's far north, history and a real-time threat are always top of mind. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.